Imagine a robot that can track a child lost in dense forest or help a blind person navigate through a busy city. That's the next generation of robotic technology, and it's here today. Dr. Ernest Iran and John Zellig join me with uh, two innovative uh, devices. Thank you for being here. It's good to be here. I'm glad you're here because this, all of this looks pretty complicated to me. Tell me how, how this works. Okay, so essentially what, what we're doing is we're putting intelligent capabilities on board the aircraft so that they operate without any human intervention. We have override capability and safeties, but primarily once we launch the vehicles, they operate on their own. They communicate to each other on their own, and they do not ask us for guidance as to what to do next. They just complete the mission. So essentially, you've got a camera on that uh, machine that's moving around right there. It has a camera transmitting the image that we can see on a monitor, and essentially it's communicating with this device here? Well, in this case, I mean, this is a bit of a demonstration setup, but this vehicle on the ground, what we typically use it for is to test out our controls in the lab on the ground where it's relatively safe. Once we're sure that the algorithms are stable and, and safe and operable, we can then put them on the aircraft and fly them in real world missions. So if a child were to be, be lost, how would this help? Well, essentially what you can do is UAVs and unmanned aircraft uh, they can move very, very quickly and they can cover a great deal of area very fast. Um, so in this case, you've got fixed-wing aircraft. They fly quickly. They can cover a large search area with down-looking cameras, infrared, if you will. And they can say, I think that was a, the child down there. Or maybe it's over there. They then communicate to each other and get that information back to another vehicle, which maybe flies slower, but can hover directly over top like a small helicopter. That helicopter can then communicate and say, yes, that's exactly what we're looking for, and can report that data back to a ground vehicle, you know, obviously not this one, but mm -hmm. something a little bit more robust, who can then go directly to the, the lost person, for instance. So potentially really quite, uh, quite significant. John, I'm going to bring you into this uh, discussion now. You've actually got a belt, and yeah, come over here. And Indira is actually modeling the belt. And this is, this is pretty significant for people who are blind or may have Alzheimer's. And tell me how it works. Um, the easiest way to describe how it works, it's like um, people use Google Maps, but you don't need your eyes. So um, what the person senses are nudges along their waist, pointing them in the, the direction to the waypoints, guiding you to the final destination. So if you wanted to use it, we've tried to make it, make it simple because we want it to be inexpensive so people can actually afford it. Um, we'd make use of um, the cell phone and communicate using its interface, telling, I want to go, let's say, to the CN Tower. So this interface would, um, we would run Google Maps on here, and the collection of waypoints would be sent to the belt, and then the belt would guide you with nudges. Um, Initially, we started out um, using it for people that are blind. We realized that with people with cognitive impairments, for example, people with Alzheimer's, it can be useful also. Currently, um, there are tracking devices with GPS, um, to, um, so the caretakers know where the people with Alzheimer's are. In this particular case, we're giving them another sense so they can be guided back home um, on their own. So, so essentially, if I understand correctly, basically the belt gives you pressure points, and then if you feel a pressure point to the left side, then you would just move on, on to the left side. That is, that is right? correct. And you've kept price in mind for this, haven't you? Yes, we have. Um, initially, when we started this work, um, we realized the, mil the military is working on something expensive. Obviously, we're not in the same budget as the military. So ideally, we, we're trying to commercialize this with the help of the Ontario Centers of Excellence, who's given us funding, and we have a startup company called Tactile Site to p pursue this further. We're hoping with, um, to get this device, this actual prototype costs us $100 to make. So that's kind of the um, point that we would like to sell this for. So we're not trying to make a profit out of it. It's more to help the people. Um, we've had interest from um, people who want to use this for recreational purposes and the military as well. <laughs> more as a disposable unit. <laughs> and, and we just got a little bit of time left. What's with the reaction to this? Um, to it, it's been very positive. Um, with regards to the Alzheimer, we just received um, um, a grant from the American Alzheimer's Association. We're going to be doing um, field trials at the Toronto Rehab Institute. So um, we thought that was quite interesting that they bought into it. And C the CNIB has been very supportive of our work in providing us with volunteers. Incredible. Two great robotic inf you know, inventions with potentially significant uh, impacts. Mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, having both of you on today. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. We'll be right back.